Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. All right. So uh, I guess I was I was right about when we when we were because uh, we we just met up with the new party. But it turns out that it's just Faisal that we met up with. So like right, we're right. about to meet everyone. So sorry for spoiling everything, everyone. Isn't this a damn curiosity? It's I mean, the second we knew time it was I've been happen. sent to who's heading my direction with humans in tow. What are Dredge doing up here? God, does anybody know what's going on around here? They leveled Grafheim to the ground. We've we'll been losing ground for days. Jorinders and Einertoft now. They just sent me to gather Krumer and the rest from Wormtoe when we ran across this bunch of slag, and there's a lot more where that came from. Is this Arl the Varl you've got, Krumer? What have you been doing? Eating each other? Many went to Blot's Balker. Are you telling me Grafheim is completely gone? I like how he's like, yeah, yeah, there, there's not that much of us. Let's get back to this thing about how our capital city burned down. <laughs> he is to the point. And Wagner's dead. Oh, great. And the king is dead, too. The world's ending. Come on, this is old news. <laughs> Wait. He takes a long moment to look out over the care of men, men, women, and children following behind you. Not them. Well, um, we just saved your ass. I'll die before you send us away. Yeah, I, I like the we just saved your ass because yeah. if we can get more resources out of this... Yeah, it's, it's little one. You have no idea how many slag I've butchered in the last few. You have no idea how many slag I've butchered in the last few weeks. That is a fair argument. Uh, I don't get into fights. You can't. I can't win. Damn it, Faisal. Who cares about that? What are the depths happening, Grafheim? He's back to the point again. I, I like him. I like him a lot. <laughs> Low rumble, growing louder by every uh, following moment. Groomer is my favorite man. Oh yeah, we're just gonna let this unfold, right? There oh we yeah. go. Don't stop until you reach Hatterborg. Hmm. Why is that? I wonder. Oh. <clears throat> Right. Oh man, the first time I saw that happen, my mind was blown. I immediately paused it and went to the options menu and started looking for a sprint key. There isn't one. <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go! Yeah, that's sort of the, the glorious thing about it, too, is that you are forced to just watch this unfold in front of you. I can't tell if that's supposed to be, like, the spines on the creature's back, or if that's new mountains forming, or, like... And I think that's the point, right? Like, you're, you're, you're supposed to be confused by the scale of it. Like, the worm is knocking down mountains. Mm -hmm. But is it also becoming those mountains? It's unclear. I guess that's pretty fair. I always thought it was just the mountains getting pushed around because, you know... The structure beneath the surface is just shifting rapidly. Yeah, right? exactly. And that's the world serpent, man. I like how the Varl are setting up that defensive line. That's really, really cool. Yeah, I, I know we've already talked this about this a lot, but I, I still love the the context that the art delivers mm -hmm. because it says a lot without using any words at all. Yes, which is important because in a game that's mostly words, you don't want there to be too many words, so you try and cut it down wherever. You yeah, I mean, it'd be. I feel like it'd be underutilizing the fact that it's a game. Yes. You are still standing. Well, most of you. Rest up, then move on. A mountain just sank into the earth, and some something is out there, and you're just going to send us away? I don't know who you are, but you're not going to Einertoff. There's a couple hundred Varl here who will back that up. Where are we supposed to go? Back the way we came? We're stuck between two mountain ranges. In one direction, a few thousand Varl. In another, an army of dredge and whatever caused that quake. Einertoft is a Varl city. This shouldn't be news to a Varl. Give it a, re a rest, Faisal. Don't you recognize who you're talking to? Surprise suddenly flashes across his face. Isn't this the second time that we've made him look like an asshole, or is oh. that the other guy? Uh, I'm going to go with a yes. It might be the other guy. But yeah, I think you're right. So Ingvar. We're pretty good at making people look like assholes, though. I think this might be the one person you want to let into Einertoft. You're the humans come with me. All of them. I love it when Ivor pulls rank. It's great. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> Ivor, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> Some other time run. No, now. Now is a good time. Fuck you. Whatever. Ugh. I, uh, I love that moment, though. We're going to because... leave immediately because, I mean, we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of activity. A black shadow is sweeping down the valley. Something has obliterated the mountainside. It's a veritable ocean of dredge. Oh, good! A towering giant, blood red from head to toe, is in their midst. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, good. To run. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, our, our morale is actually higher than it was before we reached this point. Yeah, we did start off pretty low, which was <laughs> surprising because for a while we were actually doing really, really well we with were, our morale. We were. I think it's because we kept following into those fights, but after after we lost that one, we, we kind of got a little skittish and started backing off on that. I think that's I think how you get a fair. lot of your... Like, cleaning up is how you, how you get it. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Some clansmen have discovered a large patch of wild fruit. Some people have begun to sample them. A mother frets about whether they're safe after overhearing one of the children say that it tastes funny. Um, I think it's fine, so I'm going to gather as much as we can, right? Might as well. Yeah, we're going to gather as much as we can. A few people become a little drunk, but nobody becomes sick. Awesome. 16 supply. That's two more Hell days. Hell yeah. That's, that's worth it to me. Absolutely. Again, we talked about how supplies don't really matter, but then I went back and I watched our early playthroughs, and there are times when I actually spent renown on buying supplies in town. 
I mean, ah. you you did that in our second recording session too. Yeah, that's what you I'm did that a lot about. actually. I did it a point lot. Where I was like, no, I don't know why we're no, doing it. I don't know why I was. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry, guys. That's bad advice. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just go ahead and upgrade whoever we can upgrade, right? We've 37. Yeah. Oh. I mean, definitely Ivor. Oh, yeah. Especially yeah. because now he's, what, rank three? Hell uh, yeah. Yeah, so now we need to give him more. So we need to give him one of those so that way he can use two. So now he mm, can break, mm -hmm. I think, eight armor per because he gets four and then two so from the good. item and then two more from, so yeah, eight armor off. And then I think I'm just going to strength him up. Is yeah. That good? Yeah, I agree. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, Krumer gets promoted. I mean, it only costs us, what, five? I think so, yeah. Yeah. So let's we ahead. might as well. Yeah. Uh, Krumer, I will give two more armor break to. Or do we want to make him more... Hmm. I think we make him a heavier hitter. A little stronger. Yeah, because right now we don't have the hack in, in, yeah. in this group. That's true. Do we want to promote him again is the question, because that's ten. It's ten. We'll come uh, back to it. I'm, I'm going to think probably, oh. but... I think we better promote him. To four? I don't know if that's really going to do anything. Why not? You think so? Well, I mean... I mean, his ability... I would rather upgrade Hogan to three before we upgrade Hogan him. Hogan can't to upgrade to three, unfortunately. He's one kill short. Right. So if you want to wait until he's... That's that's fine. But if... Oh. This, I oh. think, is the best. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Um. So now... Uh... Yeah, I think I think that's the way that to way do it, That way he can man. just go balls to the wall twice? Absolutely. Sure, let's do it. Okay. Um, and that's everybody. I think that's also going to be important for the final battle, too. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, Eagle doesn't get anything, Alette doesn't get anything, and Faisal gets nothing. Okay, cool. Let's get down to it. Uh, we can just go ahead and leave, then. We're good? Yeah, there's nothing we can buy from the market anyway, so... Uh, alrighty, on our way. Not with, uh, two or whatever we had left. Yeah, no. Jesus. Unless we're really lucky. So oh, yeah, here we go, here we oh, go. Oh, yeah. This is one of... Oh, it's just how the bridge slowly builds. So, do you think during the, uh, when the serpent was, was swimming in the ground and breaking up mountains, do you think they should have had a, uh, a voiceover like this? No. No? You think, I think it's better left unsaid? I think the reason why there's no voiceover is because what do you say? <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I, I feel like anything that they would have vocalized yeah. would have actually kind of pulled you out of the moment yep. because it would be panic and fear. I think anything and there's nothing that, else appropriate. I think anything that that takes away from that that moment of whatever what all of the characters mm -hmm. are experiencing is this moment of shocked silence. Mm -hmm. And so if you take away from that by introducing a voiceover, then it's clear somebody isn't in shocked silence. Somebody has thoughts to say and words to express. That's so, fair. I think it's I think it's better with no voiceover. I think it just stands for what it is because it's mysterious. It's meant to be. And if somebody tries to offer explanation, it's just gonna get in the way. And and I think sort of the beautiful thing about that oh, moment too. So cool. It is really cool. Just like the people are so tiny. The coral are so <laughs> numerous. They're everywhere. And yet the mountains dwarf them. And dwarf them. And and the best part is is that now we know that humans aren't welcome here, so there's sort of this underlying tone of like un being uncomfortable, like we don't know what's gonna come of this. I but, wanna live. <laughs> I don't care that it's covered in snow and ruled by giants. I want to live there. <sighs> Wasn't there a a like massive Indiegogo campaign that somebody hosted to um actually make Minas Tirith, right? Yeah, they were going to spend like 5 billion or something like that and like build the city. It's like if you donated if if you gave like I think $100,000, you basically would be declared a lord of the land. <laughs> Or like, <laughs> yeah, of, okay. of, or like a noble or something. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's right up there with like the Mars One people who are like, yeah, we're gonna have four people on Mars living in a colony by 2020. And eh, no, you're not. <laughs> you're gonna steal four billion dollars worth of people's money, and then you're gonna disappear. Yeah. Um, we don't have anything to do with our heroes. Um, we can't leave. There's nothing we can do with the market either. I think at this point we could rest. Oh. So we lose. Oh, we just automatically rest. I expected a dialogue. This is the dialogue. For you, you rest in town and then... Oh, wait, no. And then you can go to the Great Hall. Right, so I needed to oh, take a day. Was the Great Hall not an option It wasn't before? an option. I don't Ooh. think. It might have I been mean, an option. I mean, we might have missed totally it. totally fucking blind. This guy, I love his horns. I love the way that they just kind of like right off the front. Oh, yeah. It's neat. Greetings from Wormtoe. I've brought an ally. This is an unusual way to do it, but I think it... I think it might be a good way. I don't know, to it show is, the dialogue like this as opposed to the way they've been doing it? Well, the only other time we've seen this was when we were first introduced to Rook and Alette. 
Right. And and we actually brought that up too. We were like, this is a strange, different way of yeah. portraying this. Ingvar among us again. Is this what the end of the world looks like? <laughs> Deep wounds on the Varl King. It was my last option. You look like death, Gerunder. The Sunder came through Grafheim, all of them, or we would still be there. A few thousand Varl remain. Bellower has been following us since Grafheim. That is what he does. <laughs> What will that you do? That is absolutely what he Remain. Does. There is no better place for us than here. We will make our stand in Einertoft. But even if Einertoft falls, the Varl won't be wiped out. Hacken is taking our best warriors to Aberang, as we were discussing. I'm not going, Gerunder. We're needed here. This is not a debate. And then a messenger bursts in. A stone singer has been cutting a path across the bridge. Gods, can we not have a moment's respite? They should not be here already. A stone singer's with him. Let me bring down the bridge as I said. It will buy us. I said the bridge stands, Mender. I say it again to you and the Prince of Men and the whole Mender Council were they here. I will not say it again. Hacken, you go to Aberang. Avon, do not touch that bridge. I talked to you about Avon, right? Avon Earl? The Did we talk about this in an episode yet? I think we did. I, th- I can't remember if we did. Refresh me real quick. Uh, Avon Earl was uh, one of the chief animators on Disney's Sleeping Beauty and yes. grew to define their artistic style throughout the 50s and 60s. Um, and that is primarily the art style that this game is based off of. So I thought it was a nice tribute for them to throw in the name of the Mender as being Avon's name. Yeah, I agree. It was interesting. Plus, it's a cool name. Um, the Varl have backed away in fear. Avon stops before the stilt-legged figure. Suddenly, Ivor is beside you. We should help him, right? Is that the right move? Well, I mean, is it, though? They, I don't know if What's the they're going to help here? us, right? <clears throat> yeah, but like... So, so far when we've encountered situations like this, I feel like we always leave it up to them to work their shit out. That's we fair. usually go, okay. you know what? Take care of it yourself. It's so your bridge, your problem. Tension crackles between the two on the bridge almost more than figuratively. You look to Ivor, who is intently focused on the scene unfolding. Ivor does nothing at first. Then he says, I'm going down there. Hmm. Now we join him, right? We, yeah, I, I feel like we have to because Ivor is single-handedly our most important warrior. Listen to me, Rook. You will probably die here, and so will everyone else who steps on that bridge. Are you prepared for that? Yeah, I think so. Fight like it's your last. Here we go. Yeah. There's really, I feel like there's no true pragmatic choice in that scenario no. just because it's like a... No easy choice. You gotta do it. Yep. Okay. Is, is this another one of those scenarios, too, if you ever say no, do you have that weird, like, dream-like situation where you accidentally say yes? Kind of like what we had with Hacken. I don't actually know. Oh, by the way, I learned something. Apparently, we've been pronouncing Hacken's name wrong this whole time. Um, and this could still be wrong, but this is sure. the comments that we've been getting yeah. um, on our earlier videos. Apparently, the right way to pronounce it, if you're doing it the Icelandic yeah. origin... Um, it would be Haukan. Haukan. Huh. That's interesting. Um, I do not speak any Icelandic. So yeah, I, no, imagine, I. I imagine those uh, those two... Oh, God, this guy. They linked us, though, to a a, uh, a resource that actually gave an audio I really representation. Like the, I really like so. the way this battle is set up, where you can zoom out, and you can see that <laughs> half of the battle is right here, and the other half is what we're fighting over here. It's really, really neat. <laughs> that, that is it's, absolutely it's cool fantastic. And especially seeing the impenetrable wall of dredge. Oh god, yeah. Uh, I um, think, but I think this battle is best saved for the next episode. I think you're probably right. We will get into this next time. Yeah. Uh, question of the day, though. Um, let's talk. Let's start talking about the bridge because the bridge becomes like a major a major plot point in this, whether or not to destroy it. And I think that the question that it comes down to is whether or not your legacy is more valuable than your continued existence. Because that really is what it comes down to. If they destroy the Varl Bridge, then there's nothing left of the Varl once they're dead. But if you leave the bridge standing, then it will always stand as a monument to the Varl. But at the same time, in the scene just prior to when you cross the bridge, you you see that, that serpent thing just dis- casually destroying mountains as it passes. Like, it's not trying to destroy them. Yeah, it, it sort of, like, makes everything feel kind of insignificant. Yeah, so, like, those tiny, tiny Varl... On their tiny, tiny mountain. That's a that's a really good point. Is that is is it <clears throat> is legacy more important than existence? I guess is is the way to look at it. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? Leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a very different question, but it's, it's a maybe maybe we'll 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 do a little bit more of a literal question next time. But this time, though, <laughs> the existential difficulties remain. Yes. We will see you next time. Thanks for watching, everyone.